Hello everyone. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Sometimes I love such pictures because I feel one amongst all of these great players. But these are the 12 Indians who are going to participate at the World Cup 2021. As you can see, there is Hari Krishna, Vidit, Adiban, Nihal Sarin, Pragnananda, Gukesh, Arvind Chidambaram, Inian, Harika. Padmini Raut, Vaishali and Bhakti Kulkarni. So 12 Indians who will take part in the World Cup. That will start from the 10th of July and will go all the way up to 8th of August. It's one of the most important events in the world of chess. And that is the reason why uh, a lot of you have been asking for more information on it. And this video covers all of it. Now firstly, what are they playing for? You know all these players and I must tell you that in the open section you have the world champion Magnus Carlsen, Fabiano Caruana, Levon Aronian, Anish Giri, Grishchuk, Mamed Yarov, MVL, Firuja, Lanier Dominguez and Sergei Karyakin and totally 206 participants playing from many many different countries. And in the women's section also you have some amazing names. There is Goryachkina, Katrina Lano, Maria Muzichuk, Anna Muzichuk, Nana Zagnitze, Harika, Tanzongi, Dinara Sadua Kasova, Alina Kashlinskaya and Sara Khadem. So all these top players in the world are actually playing for the two spots in the candidates 2022. Now you may say but Magnus Carlsen already is the world champion. Why would he play here? Well, Magnus has had this dream of winning the World Cup. He loves the knockout format and he has never won it. So he said, I'm going to play this time. And if Magnus wins, then the next player gets to go to the candidates. Uh, that is up till fourth position, you know. So if uh, first one has qualified to the candidates, that is Magnus. Then if someone else also qualifies who is already in the candidates, then the next player gets a chance. But that is only applicable to for the first four positions okay they are also playing for a huge prize fund as you can see here the beauty of uh, the, the world cup is that every player gets to go home with a prize money uh, even the one who loses in the first round now how do, does this 206 players work so firstly 50 seeds get to get a buy in round one so the remaining 156 players will play against each other. So 78 go back home. That's why you can see the num round one. 78 players who go out get a prize fund of 3750. Then the remaining 78 are added to the 50. So they become 128. Then 64 go out in round two, 32 in round three and so on. So if you manage to reach the last round, that is the eighth round, then you if you win it, you win $110,000. That's quite a lot of money. Uh, it is close to 80 lakh. Yeah, something like that. Something close to 80, 90 lakh of rupees. In women's also, there is a good price fund. Uh, the total price fund, by the way, here is 14 crores. Yeah, that's almost 14 crores. And here, the total price fund in women's is 5 crores in Indian rupees. Uh, and... Uh, you know, the 12 Indians who, ha who are playing have qualified through different routes. Like these are the eight uh, in the open section who are playing. And in that, you, you see that uh, Hari and Vidit by rating, then Adiban by Federation spot, Arvind by uh, zone spot. You know, he's the national champion. Nihal Sarin Prag Gukesh by wildcards. Indian had won this AICF qualifier. So uh, really a big thanks to the AICF and uh, our secretary and also the FIDE president for giving three wild cards to the young Indians, Gukesh, Prag and Nihal. Uh, it's kind of unprecedented, I would say. So let's see the players. Now, Hari Krishna is our top seeded Indian. You know, he's number 11 in the list and he gets a buy in the first round. But in round two, he win he'll play against the winner of Leandro Crisa and Kzeda Perez. So this is his small uh, section that I took out. Uh, and uh, 
Hari Krishna has a good chance because those two players are rated around 25-50. On the other, like the below four players, I think Lupulescu may come out on top. And then Hari Krishna may play against Lupulescu. And highly, highly possible that Hari Krishna will move to round four. Uh, if he moves to round four, then he will play against Yu Yangi. That's, I mean, if Yu Yangi wins all his games. Uh, but I think that is how it is. So already, if you think about it, quarterfinals is round six. Semis is round seven and finals round eight. So that means even to reach until round four, you're already meeting a player like Yu Yangi. That's how tough this tournament is. Uh, then we have Vidit Gujarati. With, oops, sorry. Vidit Gujarati here uh, also gets a buy in round one because he's the 13th seed. He'll play the winner of Yergus Pechak and uh, also uh, and Alexander Fier. Now, uh, if you know the story of Pechak, uh, Pechak, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, so this was his position when he was playing against Boris Gelfand in the qualifiers, hybrid tournament of European online tournament. Uh, and here, uh, Boris moved his queen up to b4 here by mistake. You know, he mouse slipped. And uh, Pe Pechak actually offered a draw instead of taking the queen with the bishop. And that's the reason why the FIDE president actually recognized his sportsmanship and says Pekchak, whose impressive fair play attitude should not only be praised but also rewarded. So that's how wonderful, uh, that's a very wonderful story. So one of the two will play with it. With it has great chances of winning that round, round two moves to round three, where he might face the one and only Adiban Baskaran. Because if you look at the pairing, Adiban is right there. He, he'll win his first round because he's not playing a very strong player. Uh, and then he might play against Delgado Ramirez, who is a strong GM. But he is the higher rated. Adiban is the higher rated. So he will face Vidit in round three. And Adiban and Vidit have played many times against each other. And it's like fire and ice facing off against each other. Will be greatly exciting to see. If Vidit wins this or Adiban wins this, then they face most probably Jeffrey Xiong in round four. And well, if they win it there, then maybe in round five, Anish Giri, who knows. But Anish Giri has to also worry about Arvind Chidambaram, he, the national champion of India. And this is his uh, bracket. So first round is pretty okay for Arvind. Then he plays Abdu Satarov mostly. And Abdu Satarov, young talent from Uzbekistan, very, very talented. Uh, I think uh, would be not easy for Arvind, but he would be the higher seed. And if he beats Abdu Satarov, he will face Anish Giri. And for Anish, it will be a nice and interesting uh, match. Also, if you remember last World Cup, Arvind Chidambaram had eliminated Michael Adams from the tournament, which is never easy, you know, world-class player like that. And Anish has had his problems at the World Cup. As you can see in 2017, he was almost eliminated by Setu Raman. So, Arvind versus Anish would be a nice match to follow. Moving on to our three young talents who have got the wild cards. I call them the three musketeers, the future of Indian chess, Gukesh, Prague and Nihal. Let's have a look at what Nihal is up against. Nihal is playing Arthur Segwani, who is an IM. Uh, and uh, around 2400, I think Nihal should not have great difficulties there. But then in round two, he's playing Sanan Sujirov, who is a strong Russian player, 2670. Uh, and then if he wins that, he will play mostly Andrekin, who is again a very, very good Russian player, has played the candidates before 2700+. plus. For uh, Pragnananda, Bersamina Paolo is, a, is an IM from Philippines, beatable. But then there is Gabriel Sargisian, strong Armenian player, 2680. And then um, if he wins that, he may face the candidate right now, Kirill Alexienko, who played in the candidates recently. Again, very strong, very strong. Moving on. Uh, Gukesh has a very interesting first round. He has Pavel Teklaf and Pavel Teklaf is a IM but 2500 plus. So Gukesh already has a tough first round. If he wins it, 
he's facing Daniel Dubo. So Gukesh already has a very tough second round in the form of Dubo. But what an opportunity for young Gukesh yeah, to, to fight it out against the best. Indian, who played brilliant chess to qualify, he won the AICF qualifiers for the World Cup, is going to face the top, higher rated in the first round itself. I think Indian is the only Indian who is facing a higher rated player, Sebastian Bogner, who is around 25-80. Uh, but Indian, I think, has good chances against Bogner. If he manages to win, he then takes on Evgeny Tomaszewski. Nice. That would be a very, very tough opponent. Tomaszewski, very strong Russian player. Moving to the women's section, we have Harika as the top Indian player. She's the sixth seed in the tournament. She has a bye in the first round. She'll play the winner of Medina and uh, Jana Schneider, I think uh, Medina is the stronger one there from Indonesia. If she wins, she might play against Gunina. Uh, and well, Gunina's rating has fallen a lot. On your left is Gunina. She's right now 24-36. But actually, uh, if you look at Gunina's highest rating, it's around 25-50. So playing Gunina in third round itself is not an easy pairing for Harika. We have Vaishali, sister of Pragnananda, you know, both the siblings playing at the World Cup. Such a happy occasion. Uh, she will take on Kyu Zhu, uh, the well-known streamer. She's going to play her in the first round. If Vaishali wins, she will then take on Bella Khotenashvili. That's Bella for you. She is a Georgian GM, very strong player. And if Vaishali manages to beat her, maybe she will take on the winner of two Kazakh girls, Abdu Malik and Asua ba uh, Asau Baeva. So, uh, interesting pairing there as well. Moving on, we have Bhakti Kulkarni, our national champion, uh, reigning national champion. And she has uh, Anastasia Paramzina, who's around 2250 in the first round. Not an easy uh, pairing, but I think Bhakti should be able to win it. And then, surprisingly, she's playing against Natalia Pogonina. When she played the World Cup in 2018, there too she faced Pogonina and lost one and a half half in the first round. So, here's her chance for revenge. Uh, we have Padmini Raut who got qualified as the 2018 Asian champion. Padmini is a big fighter and this format, I feel, kind of suits her style. If she, you know, focuses well, she can win the first round against Ulvia Fatalieva. Then she can, uh, she has to play Sara Khadem, who's very strong, 10th seed in the tournament. But if she wins that, then Gunay Mamad Zada, I think then it could become easier. So Padmini could be the dark horse there. What is the time control? Now, first they will play two. So if you look at the schedule of this event, every round is allotted three days. Game one, first classical game. Uh, sorry, day one, day two, second classical game. And then if the score is 1-1, then you move to the third day where there is a tie break. And every round is divided that way. So if you look here, the time control is 90 minutes for 40 moves, followed by 30 minutes for the rest of the game with an increment of 30 seconds per move. So it's a long time control. Uh, there's also a delay. If you reach uh, 15 minutes late, you, you lose $500. If you reach after 15 minutes, you lose the game. Now, if the scores are 1-1 and this happens a lot because when two strong players play each other, there can be two draws or one win each. And then they play two games on the tiebreak day of 25 minutes plus 10 seconds increment. Again, if there is 1-1, then they play two games of 10 plus 10, 10 minutes plus 10 seconds increment. Again, if it's 1-1, then you move to 5 plus 3. Again, if it is 1-1, then you play an Armageddon. That's how intense the tiebreak day is. And sometimes when it goes all the way down to the wire, it becomes very, very tiring for these players. So that's why this tournament lasts really long. It has its 28 days. In 2017, I covered the full event along with Amruta in Georgia, Batumi. It was, no, not Batumi, uh, sorry. Uh, it was in Georgia, uh, Tbilisi. And it was really, really intense. Aronian had won it back then. And for the women's section, it's a 25-day event. One round less than men because they have 103 players. Men have 206 players. The tournament is taking place in Sochi, Russia. 
and the place where it's happening is so beautiful you know when i saw this i felt like no i have to go there why can't i go there look at this look at the pictures here it's right in between the mountains Whew. so if anyone is still thinking about going this might be a chance river flowing there cafes oh mountains in the backdrop you can go for fishing you can go for um, you know trekking you can do all sorts of things now for this event we have something very interesting for you this is the chess base india world cup contest so if you are able to guess in the open section and the women section both who will be the indian who will go the farthest so and till which round these two components are very important so for example if you think hari krishna will go till round 6 then you write hari krishna in bracket round 6 and in women if you think harika till round 5 then you write harika bracket round 5 that's how you put it and you put it there and if you get all these four parameters right that the highest reaching indian in both open and women and also uh, the round number should be correct then you get a signed copy of Frit 17 and Mega Database by Gelfand and Kramnik, one world champion, one world champion, uh, one world uh, championship finalist signed by them. And also you get Vedika's chocolates premium pack signed by Vidit Gujarati. So these are the prizes that you can fight for. So do write down in the comment section, who do you think will win? And uh, lastly, do send in your wishes to all these 12 gladiators will be fighting it out there for many of them this is the first occasion for some of them it's very important because they wanted to want to make it to the candidates we at chess base india will be supporting them i'll be streaming all the games live be it classical be it tie breaks the entire event i hope that you all will also follow it until then guys thank you so much for following this if you have any questions related to the world cup please let me know in the comment section i'll respond to them this is Sagasha signing off. Bye-bye.